I saw a headline recently, quote, high and dry, we're running out of water. It's a mystery, we haven't already run out of water. Across metropolitan Australia, population increases run into the millions. High rises are everywhere. Most of them have at least two bathrooms. We flush the toilet with the same water with which we clean our teeth. How does that make sense? And we can't harvest water or build a dam, but the population surges and water usage with it. But sure enough, we're told that if we run out of water, it'll be, to quote one story, the impact of climate change and more extreme fires, droughts and floods and water supply becomes a lot less reliable. Unquote, poor old climate change. I'm almost dry in the mouth reminding Australians of the billions of litres of water that's wasted every year into the Timor Sea, the Gulf of Carpentaria or the Pacific Ocean. But we're now going to be hammered with a dry summer equals climate change. And Bowen standing the economy on its head. You've heard me call it a national economic suicide night about climate change, demonising coal and gas and pretending we can power the nation on renewable energy. In fact, the new governor of the Reserve Bank even says that she's going to have to factor in climate change when determining interest rates. To tell the new governor that climate always changes is most probably wasting your breath. Well, if declarations are fashionable, here's a declaration that Bowen and co will continue to ignore, but a collection of more than 1,600 scientists, critical of their peers' extravagant claims about climate change, have drawn a prominent recruit to sign their 2019 declaration that the climate emergency is a myth. Professor John Clauser won last year's Nobel Prize for Physics. He's become the second Nobel laureate to sign the climate declaration, joining over 1,600 other scientists rebuking the idea of a climate crisis. The declaration organised by the Climate Intelligence Foundation says, quote, climate science should be less political while climate policy should be more scientific. Scientists should openly address uncertainties and exaggerations in their predictions of global warming, while politicians should dispassionately count the real costs as well as the imagined benefits of their policy measures, unquote. Well, last year, the International Energy Agency issued a roadmap towards net zero emissions, which has become sort of Bible on net zero and climate change. But the Energy Policy Research Foundation, which is almost 80 years old, it's a not-for-profit organisation that studies energy economics and policy issues with special emphasis on oil, natural gas and petroleum products. It criticised the International Energy Agency and argued the roadmap, quote, will dramatically increase energy costs, devastate Western economies and increase human suffering, unquote. Now, you don't need to be a scientist to know that the aim of global policy should be prosperity for everyone and central to that, providing reliable and affordable energy at all times. But back to the Nobel Prize winner, Professor John Clauser, who said, quote, the popular narrative about climate change reflects a dangerous corruption of science that threatens the world's economy and the well-being of billions of people. He writes, misguided climate science has metastasized into massive shock journalistic pseudoscience. Professor Clauser has said, in turn, the pseudoscience has become a scapegoat for a wide variety of other unrelated ills. It's been promoted and extended by similarly misguided business marketing agents, politicians, journalists, government agencies and environmentalists, unquote. Professor Clauser, along with 1,600 other scientists, argued that the planet is warming more slowly than predicted and has not driven a spike in natural disasters, an argument supported by the former environmentalist activist Michael Schellenberger. Sensibly, Professor Clauser and his mates argue the simple truth. Carbon dioxide is plant food, not a pollutant. They argue correctly it's essential to all life on Earth. But is the Reserve Bank going to use the hoax of a climate emergency, the myth of a climate emergency, to excuse the Reserve Bank's shortcomings in managing the government sector of the economy? I suspect that Bowen's entire political career is on the line in pursuing this nonsense about renewable energy. If we want a summer of blackouts, continue down this route. I suspect that public opinion, if nothing else, will force a realisation of the necessity of fossil fuels to continue to play an important part in economic growth and productivity. 
I think we need a new catch cry. Keep the coal fires burning.